What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion 10 feature tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out another one of the new features in Lumion 10, the ability to add an Aurora Borealis to the sky in the background. So this is obviously very location specific and in a lot of places it doesn't make sense, but I think it can create some fun kind of stylized images, especially if you have more of a winter or a north scene or something like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, we're going to go into the Lumion example models in the files section and we're going to go ahead and load I want to load one of these that looks like it can actually be like a winter scene so I think I'm going to go with the Villa Wegner model on this one so you can click on this and load it in order to kind of follow along and I may make some changes to this scene a little bit uh, a little bit later on near the end of the video to make this look a little bit more um, a little bit more realistic and like it fits with the scene but for now let's just talk through how we can add the Aurora Borealis to our different renderings. All right, so when we first load this image, um, you can see how we've got our image with these people sitting outside and you've got your pine trees and stuff in the background, but then you've also got some more tropical trees in here. We're gonna come back and change these in a minute um, after I've gone through kind of how to use the Aurora Borealis. So I do wanna make a scene that makes a little bit more sense, but let's start off by going into photo mode. And so when we go into photo mode, what we're gonna do is first of all, let's go ahead and and let's um, store this camera and let's load a nighttime preset. So that's gonna load up our preset so that this is in here as nighttime. And the one thing I'm gonna do, and I'm probably gonna make a video on this later, is I'm gonna load in a real sky, but I'm gonna load in one of the nighttime real skies. So you can see how you can get to that by loading a real sky from your effects. Go into sky, click on real skies, and then inside your real skies, you're gonna click on this image and we're gonna to go to the night settings. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick one of these. These are your nighttime, um, these are your nighttime HDRI images that you can use in order to uh, kind of light your scene um, so that you do have a little bit of light coming from your lit sky. And so one thing I wanna do is I wanna bring the brightness of this down and probably bring our overall brightness down. And I thought I had a couple lights in here, but I'm not really seeing them. Maybe we'll select a different real sky. There, that works better. So we're gonna select this night one real sky we're going to bring this in and we want the moon kind of in the background and we can go ahead and have this cast a little bit of a shadow in here and again you can kind of adjust the overall brightness of your sky and the overall brightness of your scene with these sliders but we'll go ahead and call this good for right now and so now what I want to do is I want to load in the Aurora Borealis and so the Aurora Borealis can be found under effects and you can click on the button for Aurora Borealis. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna load the Aurora Borealis um, into your scene. And so you can see how this is actually, um, this is actually brought into your scene, like it's not a background image, and you can actually adjust like the location, the heading, all the different things like that, so that this is actually like a different, um, so that this is actually being generated in your sky. It's not just like an image that's being put in here or anything like that. And so this has a number of different settings you can change, like how bright it is in your sky. So you can make it more of a subtle effect by moving your brightness to the left, or you can make it a brighter effect by dragging it all the way to the right. You can also adjust the color shift of this, and we'll kind of turn our camera this way for right now. You can adjust the color shift so that you can get more reds or greens or blues, depending on what you're looking for out of this effect. So maybe something like this will give us a little bit less green, a little bit more kind of reds in here. And then speed is going to be something that's gonna affect our animation more than anything else. And then the time offset allows you to set, it's almost like the cloud location slider when you're using the clouds. It just kind of moves this around so you can see how this moves in the sky. And uh, we'll, we're gonna animate this a little bit later. So um, we'll use this as part of our animation. Scale is gonna allow you to set how large or small or how much of this is in the sky. So you can see if you click it all the way to the left, these are much larger. If you drag it all the way to the right, you get a lot more of these kind of paths of light in the sky to the right. Then you can also adjust the heading or the direction that the Aurora Borealis is facing. So when you set all of those inside of your image, you can either render this out, or if I was to click in here to do a high quality preview, you can see how this shows up in your sky. And so you can either use this as a still, or you can also animate it moving. 
And so one thing I'm gonna do is once I have this set up kind of the way that I want it with my lighting and everything else, I'm actually going to go into my menu and I'm gonna save this as an effect. So I'm gonna go to File, Save Effects, and I'm gonna go into the folder that I've set for all my Lumion presets, and I'm actually going to call this Aurora Borealis, and click Save. And so what that means is now when I go into my movie mode, I can load these effects in here. So now we're gonna click on the button for movie mode, and we're gonna go over and click on a blank slot, and we're gonna click on the button for record. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to record our video. So to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the button for add camera keyframe. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a camera spot or a camera location in here. And you can adjust the length of this clip. So you can set this to like five seconds or whatever you want it to be depending on the length of the clip that you want. But once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on the checkbox that's gonna take us back into our clip editor and we can use this to load our style into our movie clip. And right now you can see if you click on the play button, this is just gonna be a five second long clip. You can see how the birds are flying in here. Um, but this is just a five second clip with a single camera location in it. And so now that we have this uh, camera kind of set, what we wanna do is we wanna click up here in our menu and we wanna load. So we're gonna go to file, load effects, and we're gonna load that Aurora Borealis effect that we just saved. So you can see how you can bring that effect in um, that we that we created inside of our photo mode just by loading it right there. So that can be a pretty big time saver for you. And so you can see how right now if you animate this, you're not really getting a whole lot of movement or anything like that from the Aurora Borealis in the sky. That's because we need to add a keyframe. So basically what we want to do, and I'm going to go ahead and set this to the beginning of my clip, is we want to go into our Aurora Borealis. And if you look in here, you can see how there's a little button in movie mode called create keyframe and so what create keyframe is going to do is that's going to allow us to set a point where this starts and then a little further on we can set another point that this will transition to so for example let's just say that we wanted our time offset right here at 1.7 seconds we wanted that to be at the beginning of our video so what we would do is we would click and drag this to the very beginning and we would click on the button for create keyframe and you can see how this added a little dot in here indicating that we have a keyframe for our aurora borealis well now what we want to do so we want to click and drag this to the middle of our clip then we want to click on this button for create keyframe again and so what that means is now we've created a second keyframe and this is going to transition from this effect to this effect and you can use the left and right in order to uh, transition between those different keyframes. But for my second keyframe, I wanna set my time offset to something like this. And so now, if I go back to the beginning of my video and I click play, you can see how this is animating the movement of the Aurora Borealis between the setting that I had at the very beginning and the setting that I have in the middle. And so then, what we could do is we could set another keyframe at the end of this video. So we would just add a new keyframe right here and we would adjust our time offset again to maybe something like this so now this is transitioning between three different keyframes with the aurora borealis moving in here and you can do this with multiple different settings so for example let's say that we also wanted to adjust the speed that this is in here well we could start this off with a speed kind of on the low end so we'd set our keyframe right here and then in the middle we could adjust our speed by creating another keyframe and we could set this to be faster. So now what we have is we have an Aurora Borealis that's uh, moving from a speed standpoint or it's adjusting from a speed standpoint and also animating the time offset. And so what I'm seeing in here is this is significantly faster than we need it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this speed way down to something like this, just so we get a little bit of a speed transition from the beginning to the end. And so you can animate all of these settings inside of your different video clips if you want to. And notice that you can also click in here and get your real-time preview of any, um, any frame in your video. So you can click and move this and then click in here to get a high quality preview of whatever this time is going to be inside of your video.
And so before I rent, I export this render, I'm gonna go into my build mode and make a couple quick changes. Because the Aurora Borealis is kind of more of a northern thing, there's a few things in here that don't necessarily make sense. So for example, I'm gonna delete out some of these trees because they don't really fit the actual scene that would be in here. We can leave those little bushes, but we're going to delete out those trees. And then we're also going to delete out these trees and maybe replace them with maybe a small coniferous tree or something like that. So maybe something like one of these guys. And I, I realize that uh, these would probably go more in the ground than in a planter, but we'll go ahead and leave it like this for right now. So we're gonna have those trees in here and we might even scale those down just a bit. And then we're also gonna replace this water material with maybe like a soil or something like that. Maybe like a gravel material. Because that would make more sense than having water out here in a, uh, in a northern type environment. And then we're also gonna remove these people because we're gonna make it snowy. And so there probably wouldn't be people sitting out here in the snow. So we'll just go ahead and delete these two people out as well. And so now that we've kind of set those so that this makes a little bit more sense, um, we can go back into our movie mode. And one thing I'm going to change is I'm going to add a snow precipitation effect. So I'm gonna go into my effects under weather and add precipitation. We're gonna drag this to the right so that it's snow. And then you can set this to have more particles if you'd like, or you can set this to have no particles at all. That's kind of up to you. And so you can see how if you set this in here, you set your particle quantity a little bit higher, then it'll actually snow inside of your image. So I think this is fairly good for what we're trying to do right now. And so let's go ahead and click on the button for render clip. And so render clip is gonna allow us to render this video. And remember you can set this to as many or as few frames as you want. Just remember the more frames per second, the longer this is gonna take to render. You can also adjust your output quality to whatever you want. So I'm gonna leave this on four and I'm just gonna do this to an HD video. Um, just for the sake of speed, again, the higher the resolution, the longer this is going to take. So I'll go ahead and I'll uh, render this in as the Aurora Borealis and I'll let this render this out. So this is just gonna go through and this is gonna render every one of these frames. So you can see how this gives you a time remaining. So it'll give you kind of an estimate of how long this is going to take. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this render out and then we can come back and look at the result. All right, so now that this is done, we can click inside of this folder and that should take us to the location where our file has been created. And if we double click on this, we should be able to take a look at the rendering we've created. So you can see how um, with this, um, with this animation, we've got the Aurora Borealis moving in the background, and this is fully adjustable, so you can make it look however you want. Then we've also got the snow kind of falling down. So there are some areas where I'd like to see a little bit more snow, so I might turn off the like blocking or something like that. But overall, I think this is just kind of a fun feature that allows you to create something different, especially in a winter scene. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, let me know what you think about the feature, about Lumion 10 in general. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.